welcome all the beautiful souls aligned to this great program through PMC English on the revelations of spiritual wisdom showered to us by this great spiritual author, Harold Walwin Percival, through his book, Thinking and Destiny. As we have seen earlier, the book is nothing but an effort at making spiritual wisdom available to the entire population of the universe so that each one is able to reach higher and higher levels of spirituality and be most useful friendly citizens of this cosmos. Continuing this program about the master and how the book was written, I would be reading some of the concepts which have been culled out by our founder, leader, yogi, and enlightened master, Brahmashri Pitama Patriji, because he has been giving these messages from this book and almost 220 messages have already been sent throughout the world through this channel. I am S.K. Rajan, a senior meditator connected to this Pyramid Spiritual Society's movement who came into this great field created by Patriji, the spiritual field, after my great and most unexpected but highly rewarding introduction to Brahma Sri Patriji in the year 1998. Since then, I have been connected with the movement and we are like a body and a shadow, Patriji and myself, and I have been part of this movement. And thanks to Brahma Sri Patriji, I have been introduced to the world of books since then and have benefited immensely, not only individually, but also collectively through all the members of my family who, who happen to be very committed members of the PSSM. We have benefited mentally, physically, intellectually, and spiritually, of course, and this has given us immense benefits. So I have no doubt in mentioning that, that our lives have become more and more meaningful and purposeful after taking spirituality as one of the main subjects for our, for our existence on this earth. Our thanks and our hearty gratitude to Patriji for having identified us to be part of this great movement. I have been introduced to the world of books and many, many books have really given me, I should say, tons of wisdom. And the latest book, Thinking and Destiny, which we are now going to read, it has outmarked has almost gone much ahead of all the other books in the matter of spiritual wisdom, thanks to the great contribution by Harold Walwin Percival. After reading this book, I have come to the conclusion that this is no ordinary book. It excels in every part of the subjects that, any, that could be contained in any spiritual book and in all the subjects there are out of there are what you can call out of the box thinking and strategies devised to for mankind to evolve to greater lengths 
So, I will be assisted in the course of this, these discussions, in these presentations by my life partner Girija Rajan and Purnima, our daughter, who will be also discussing these matters threadbare after the subject is over, after the reading is over. So, off we go to continuing the part of the book insofar as the master's works and master's efforts at bringing about the book is concerned. So, as we have seen earlier, this book was dictated to Benoni B. Gattel at intervals between the years 1912 and 1932. Since then, it has been worked over again, again, again and again. Now, that is in 1946, there are few pages that have not been at least slightly changed, which has been caused because there was a reprinting of this book 14 times in the course after the book was once printed. Without assistance, it is doubtful whether the work would have been written because it was difficult for me to think and write at the same time. My body had to be still while I thought the subject matter into form and chose appropriate words to build out the structure of the form. A most difficult task to, was to get the terms to express the recondite subject matter treated. My arduous effort has been to find words and phrases that will best convey the meaning and attributes of certain incorporeal realities and to show their inseparable relation to the conscious selves in human bodies. After repeated changes, I finally settled on terms used therein. Thoughtful ex persons have stressed the need of speaking here of some of my experiences in states of being conscious and of events of my life, which might help to explain how it was possible for me to be acquainted with and to write of things that are not so at variance with present beliefs. They say this is necessary because no bibliography is appended and no references are offered to substantiate the statements herein made. Some of my experiences have been unlike anything I have heard of or read. My own thinking about human life and the world we live in has revealed to me subjects and phenomena I have not found mentioned in books but it would be unreasonable to suppose that such matters could be yet be unknown to others. There must be those who know but cannot tell. I am under no pledge of secrecy. I belong to no organization of any kind. I break no faith in telling what I have found in thinking by steady thinking while awake, not in sleep or in trance. I never been, nor do I ever wish to be, in trance of any kind. What I have been conscious of while thinking about such subjects as the space, the units of matter, the constitution of matter, intelligence, time, dimensions, the creation and exteriorization of thoughts will, I hope, have opened realms for future exploration and exploitation. By that time, rigid conduct should be a part of human life and should keep abreast of science and invention. Then civilization can continue and independence with responsibility will be the rule of individual life and of government. Here is a sketch of some experiences of my earlier life. Rhythm was my first feeling of connection with the physical world. Later on, I could feel inside the body and I could hear voices. I understood the meaning of the sounds made by the voices. I did not see anything, but I, as feeling, could get the meaning of any of the word sounds expressed by the rhythm. 
and my feeling gave the form and color of the objects which were described by words. When I could use the sense of sight and could see the objects, I found the forms and appearances which I, as feeling, had felt to be in agree approximate agreement with what I had apprehended. When I was able to use the senses of sight, hearing, taste and smell and could ask and answer questions, I found myself to be a stranger in a strange world. I knew I was not the body I lived in, but no one could tell me who or what I was or where I came from, and most of those whom I questioned seemed to believe they were the bodies in which they lived. I realized that I was in a body from which I could not free myself. I was lost, alone, and in a sorry state of suddenness and sadness. Repeated happenings and experiences convinced me that things were not what they appeared to be, that there is continued change that there is no permanence of anything, that people often said the opposite of what they really intended or meant. Children played games they called make-believe or let us pretend. Children played, men and women practiced make-believe and pretense. And comparatively, few people were really truthful and sincere. There was waste in human effort and appearances and did not last. Appearances were not made to last. I asked myself, how should things be made that will last and made without waste and disorder? Another part of myself answered, first, know what you want. See and steadily hold in mind the form in which you would have what you want. Then think and will and speak that into appearance and what you think will be gathered from the invisible atmosphere and fixed into and around that form. I did not then think in these words, but these words express what I then thought. I felt confident I could do that and at once tried and tried along. I failed. On failing, I felt disgraced, degraded, and I was ashamed. What I heard people say about things that happened, particularly about death, did not seem reasonable. My parents were about devout Christians. I heard it said and read and said that God made the world, that he created an immortal soul for each human body in the world, and that the soul who did not obey God would be cast into hell and would be burn in fire and brimstone forever and ever. I did not believe a word of that. It seemed too absurd for me to suppose or believe that my God or any God or being could have made the world or have created me for the body in which I lived. I had burned my finger with a brimstone match and I believed that the body could be burned to death, but I knew that I what I was conscious as I, could not be burned and could not die, that fire and brimstone could not kill me, though the pain from that burn was dreadful and could sense, I could sense danger, but I did not fear. People did not seem to know why or what about life or about death. I know that there must be a reason for everything that happened. I wanted to know the secrets of life and death and to live forever. I did not know why, but I could not help wanting that I knew there could be no night and day and life and death and no world unless there were wise ones who managed the world and night and day and life and death. However, I determined that my purpose would be to find those wise ones who would tell me how I should, be, I should learn and what I should do to be interested with the secrets of life and death. I would not even think of telling this any firm resolve because people would not understand. They would believe me to be foolish or insane. I was only seven years old at that time. 
Fifteen years or more years passed. I had noticed the different outlook on life of boys and girls while they grew and changed into men and women, especially during their adolescence and particularly that of my own. My views had changed, but my purpose to find those who were wise, who knew and from whom I could learn the secrets of life and death was unchanged. I was sure of their existence. The world could not be without them. In the ordering of events, I could see that there must be a government and a management of the world, just as there must be the government of a country or a management of any business for these to continue. And later on, he met Madame Blavatsky of the Theosophical Society of India. After these discussions with various bodies and various organizations, he came to the conclusion that there is no need to go to any wise one. And from November 1892, he passed through, I passed through astonishing and crucial experiences, following which in the spring of 1893, there occurred the most extraordinary event of my life. I had crossed 14th Street at 4th Avenue in New York City. Cars and people were hurrying up while sleeping up to the northern northeast corner curbstone while stepping up there light greater than that of myriads of suns opened in the center of my head in that instant or point eternities were apprehended there was no time distance and dimensions were not in evidence nature was composed of units i was conscious of the units of nature and of units as intelligences Within and beyond, so to say, there were greater and lesser lights, the greater pervading the lesser lights, which revealed the different kinds of units. The lights were not of nature. They were lights as intelligences, conscious lights. Compared with the brightness or lightness of those lights, the surrounding sunlight was a dense fog. And in and through all lights and units and objects, I was conscious of the presence of consciousness. I was conscious of consciousness as the ultimate and absolute reality and conscious of the relation of things. I experienced no thrills, emotions or ecstasy. Words fail to describe or explain consciousness. Being conscious of consciousness is the set of related words I have chosen as a phrase to speak of that most potent and remarkable moment in my life. Twice during the next 14 years, for a long time on each occasion, I was conscious of consciousness. Being conscious of consciousness reveals the unknown to the one who has been so conscious. Then it will be the duty of that to make known what he can of being conscious of consciousness. The special purpose of this book is to tell the conscious selves in human bodies that we are unseparable inseparable doer parts of consciously immortal individual trinities, that is the triune selves, who within and beyond time lived with our great thinker and knower parts in perfect sexless bodies in the realm of permanence. So this is how the book Thinking and Destiny has originated. And now we have to understand that all the matter that has come in the course of these myriad experiences that our beloved Harold W. Percival has had has been only from the astral worlds, from the other masters who have directly showered him with this wisdom and which he is now passing on to us. We will now have some discussion on what has been discussed and the qualities of the master with our co-speakers, Madam Girja Rajan. You can introduce yourself and tell us what you felt about having read the book, Thinking and Destiny, and if there are any questions that rem remain to be answered, let us attempt to know from each other how best things can be made to be understood by all. Welcome, one and all of you, for this great session of the brilliance of uh, uh, Mr. Percival, 
that is being bestowed upon us and that is being revealed to us. Sir S.K. Rajan is uh, kind enough to read from the book, uh, Thinking and Destiny by Percival. And now we will be able to understand, we will try to understand and uh, and as I have understood, I will be able to reveal some of the points that have struck me very hard and which has gone inside me as a new revelation to me. So this uh, unique experience of uh, Mr. Percival is amazing. That is, he is getting the great light and suddenly one day, as he passes through a busy road on, in New York City, he is able to see that light, the great light, which is uh, equal to the radiance of so many suns. That is the radiance that he has got, that enters his system, his body through his head, and suddenly everything is revealed to him. That is very, very amazing. He has no uh, chance of uh, seeing, referring to any other book or anything else, but he had to be still in order to get that wisdom and to put it into writing. That is what he says. That's a great revelation by him. That is a fantastic experience as well. And he's hearing voices in the form of sounds in his body. And he's able to translate it into meaningful words. That's very, very great. Because to understand all that, it's very difficult. And he, is, he, stays, he says he stays still in order to understand. So my request to all of you is to stay still when you hear all these words of wisdom and the spiritual wisdom being showered by Percival and that is being rendered to you through this channel. You be, kindly be still. You let your body and mind be still. Let us not uh, hear it as a casual talk as we do something else. That is not, not the way that we should be uh, seeing this because the matter that is given to us is very, very important to us. It is quite difficult, yet it is not, it is, it is not impossible. It is possible for each one of us to understand it if we are still. We can grasp everything, every word of his. And if we adopt that in our lives, definitely all of us with meditation, we will be able to achieve greater heights. It is the right time for all of us to enhance our spiritual wisdom and to move and uh, grow spiritually to higher limbs, realms or as Percival puts it, we become conscious of the great consciousness. And that conscious be being conscious will be throughout. That is 24 by 7. We should be conscious of that great presence of consciousness. That is what he says. That will be easier for us. So that realization, what we call as God realization or self-realization will be will become a very great, easy task for us. Easy, it will become, that great task will become very easy for us. We listen to all these matters very carefully and with stillness of mind and body. It will definitely do greater things for us. Now I'll uh, ask, I'll request Mrs. Purnima to kindly bestow her thoughts, her point of view of this preface about the author, uh, about uh, the master. Uh, in few words, so so that we'll get different uh, ideas and outlooks, uh, so that we can exchange all these things and we'll be able to reach you in a better way. Over to Mrs. Purnima. Thank you, Mrs. Girja Rajan. Uh, hi, friends. Uh, so the points that I acquired, or rather, I remember from this. Uh, um, part which Mr. Rajan uh, read was um, this book was written when his body was still, he was dictating this book, uh, first of all. The second point I took was, he, this does is not based on any belief systems. Any kind of belief system is not, it's so very neutral. The whole uh, knowledge which he has got is from a very great source, uh, which is uh, kind of unknown to us as of now. I think we'll get to know 
when we reach the end of the book. So I, I'm sure it's from a great source of uh, energy. And, uh, and also one other point is he has not uh, uh, actually mentioned that this was, uh, uh, he was getting these messages when he was in a kind of sleep or trance-like state. He was very well aware and conscious and uh, um, and all these these are some of the points which I gathered. And uh, what I would like to uh, tell you all is he is very very neutral and he is not trying to trust any kind of uh, um, he is just trying to make you all conscious of consciousness. That's the intention behind this book. He himself had the experience of being conscious of consciousness when he had that particular experience uh, when he was going through the streets of New York. So now I would like to, these are some of my, the points which I gathered. I think we can um, uh, reread if need be to uh, make you all clear about other uh, parts of, uh, um, uh, to know more about this author. What you said is absolutely correct. Uh because it is not very clear, rather the author does not reveal the source from which the wisdom has emanated to him. But it is one thing is apparent to us is that it has come from a very great source of energy and uh, it's not gathered from any other source like a book or a master or anything like that. In fact, he even conditions and comes down to say that I am not the author of this and it is just some other energy, some other energy of a great potency that has granted him all this wisdom. When he says, I would like to read that part of the book which I have not read. A most difficult task was to get terms to express the recondite subject matter treated my arduous effort has been to find words and phrases that will best convey the meaning and attributes of certain incorporeal realities and to show their inseparable relation to the conscious selves in human bodies. After repeated changes, I finally settled on terms used herein. Many subjects are not made as clear as I would like them to be but the changes made must suffice or be endless because on each reading other changes seemed advisable. I, his humility can be very easily gauged and, or known to us when you read this part of the book. I do not presume to preach to anyone, says he. I do not consider myself a preacher or a teacher. Were it not that I am responsible for the book, I would prefer that my personality be not named as its author. The greatness of the subjects about which I offer information re relieves and frees me from self-conceit and forbids the plea of modesty. I dare make strange and startling statements to the conscious and immortal self that is in every human body, and I take for granted that the individual will decide what he will or will not do with the information presented. So friends, here you can note that how humble or how, how much of humility uh, this master had. He never even ha uh, take, uh, takes the ego of being the author also. Uh, though he got all the uh, messages, um, uh, I mean, uh, the the light he has got and whatever he has written, uh, it is uh, wonderful and you can see the egoless state of his mind. He is such a uh, wonderful master and he also mentions that um, here uh, you can, you have to decide what you want from the book. So it is you who is going to, um, you can have a thought like this as a PSS master, as a meditator, you can have the highest thought here and proceed on to listening to all these messages. Uh, you can have this thought that you will get to know the, the um, 
uh, get to know yourself uh, at the best level that is your highest level because th that is a journey we are all on to to knowing ourselves so i think this uh, mm, uh, this is what i feel i think you can have uh, of course you can have your own thoughts and proceed on to listening the, uh, to these messages thank you for uh, that was a very great reading about the author about the master so we have now understood that he is a the, the master perceval is a down to earth person and he has only revealed whatever has come to him not as a teacher not as an author or thinking that he has to tell the people no he has only shared his his own uh, adventural uh, adventures that is he has come uh, across so many new experiences that is what he has uh, shared with us in this book it is not that he wants to uh, teach us or point his fingers at us that he is a higher uh, in a higher plane and he, we are yet to learn it not at all like that he only says that i have been uh, given this uh, message uh, this knowledge this wisdom and i have to share it with others only that much that simple as that so the that is the greatness of the master so he never thinks that it, he is he is teaching or he is uh, um, uh, thrusting something on us he never thought like that that it has to reach others no it he gives freedom to the listeners or the readers of this book to uh, take their own uh, his own or her own viewpoint that also he allows and he is confident that at the end of the reading of all these pages all his wisdom definitely a person will come to a state in which he will precisely know what he should do and what he should not that is what he reveals because once you are conscious of the consciousness that is uh, that is ever pervading ever available consciousness that is there throughout from which we all have come out come to being here so that consciousness we, if we are able to be aware of that or conscious of that throughout that is what he, he says he has done his job that is sharing his wisdom and sharing his experience that's all that's what he says because the matter that has come to him has surprised himself he also is surprised because of that he is not telling that it is he has already known about it and he is uh, trying to teach us or tell us it is the experience that he, he himself has uh, really was uh, surprised to have it uh, astonished to have that with that astonishment he is able to reveal everything that is the uh, because it is uh, the prime uh, the important uh, wisdom that has come to him and he feels it only by sharing it to others it will find its uh, uh, fulfillment that is what he feels very very simple very great master at that we can feel that that is why the magnificent wisdom is being read that has been told told by by him to us so uh, we can infer that this is very great wisdom that is contained in this book but he says it is only his experience so through his experience he has tried to uh, tried hard in fact to find out uh, suitable words for his the uh, wisdom the knowledge that he has been receiving is very very a very difficult one because uh, words cannot uh, contain the full experience only 90% or even lesser than that can be revealed through words words are limited but the experience really a person undergoes is uh, is fabulous is fantastic is unlimited so it cannot be contained in words that is his uh, predicament really to convey it in such words but beautiful words have been used to the maximum ability he has tried and he has found out and he has written it for 30 years uh, rereading and editing and you can im imagine because how hard he has uh, toiled really and uh, put his efforts in order to uh, reveal his experience really hats off to him his patience in 30 years will anybody do and redo and redo and redo the same matter that he has written and it has come out beautifully well because he, every time he reads he says he finds new words to express his uh, his experience so that is a fantastic uh, journey of him and uh, uh, to read that it is uh, fabulous it's fantastic for us also 
So definitely, it will, and at the same time, it is a very great teaching for all of us. So we will be knowing everything in detail about all the subjects of spirituality uh, through his experiences. So it is, uh, it is merely, we should take it as perceivals experiences that have been revealed to us in simple words or the best words that he has come to know. And it is for us to take it and think, uh, and think upon it and uh, come, to a, come to an understanding later. That is what he wishes all of us, I think. Um, I, I think I have uh, expressed myself in full. I hope uh, this will be uh, uh, giving you a gateway or the, uh, an opening into the great wisdom that we are going to deal with uh, in coming weeks, in coming days. So definitely, please watch all the episodes so that you will be informed throughout and there will be continuity and we will be able to share everything with you as uh, Percival has told. So this is only a, is not a teaching, not a preaching. This is only a sharing. So it's a sharing of our experiences. That's all. So thank you so much viewers for watching this great program. So we'll continue with the next, in the next episode. Thank you so much.